You can travel across northern France and find traces of the Great War everywhere. We're on the French coast near to Boulogne at the town of Etaples. And here during the Great War was the Bull Ring, a big training ground for the British Army, and also base hospitals receiving the wounded and the sick from the front line. And I've come to the vast Etaples military cemetery with over 11,000 burials from the First World War, making it one of the largest Commonwealth, British and Commonwealth cemeteries from the First World War in France to see this silent city of the dead of men who died of their wounds or sickness received at the front. The cemetery here was designed by Edwin Lutyens, one of the principal architects of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. And these vast towers that mark the entrance to the cemetery with their stone draped flags and the sarcophagus for the dead on top overlook those more than 11,000 burials of soldiers who died here in the base hospitals during the First World War. It's seemingly an endless field of headstones as we look across this landscape of the dead. We'll walk now down into the cemetery itself. One of the things to remember with this cemetery is that these are not men who died on the battlefield itself. These are soldiers brought back from that battlefield wounded or sick. It wasn't just shrapnel and high explosive and gas that could kill soldiers who served on the front line. Long periods of trench warfare meant that they got sick from the physical conditions on the battlefield. And there are men who are buried here who died as a consequence of those long periods in the mud and the rain and the snow and sub-zero temperatures. And as we walk along here, we see the names of the dead and the personal stories connected with those names is what really bring cemeteries as vast as this alive. The modern world goes on around us as we stand in this quiet corner of northern France where there are seemingly endless rows of headstones. It's when we come to a cemetery like this with more than 11,000 burials that we can begin to see the sheer scale of the First World War. This is only a fraction of the dead, but each one of these headstones represents a life, represents a life in many respects unfulfilled, a promise of greatness that was never realised because their life, their war ended here at a base hospital in northern France. And they left behind families and loved ones. They were men who were loved and loved themselves. And this is all part of the tragedy, really, of those enormous casualties of the Great War. And there are so many stories to focus on when we come to a site like this that really kind of brings these places alive. I'm at the grave of Lieutenant Colonel Jasper Myers Richardson of the Royal Garrison Artillery, who was a Commander Royal Artillery, he was a chief gunner of an infantry division. He was wounded during the German Kaiserschlag, the March Offensive in 1918, and died of his wounds here at the Tarpla. He's believed to be one of the oldest, if not the oldest, British servicemen to be killed on the Western Front in the Great War, to have died as a consequence of service on the battlefield. And he died here aged 68. The Tarpla was a vast military camp. And one of the things that you learn when you come to cemeteries like this that are behind the lines is that there are not just men buried here, there are women buried here too. This is the grave of Betty Stevenson of the YMCA. She was working here on a tea and bun stall or some facility for the troops and died when the camp here was bombarded by German aircraft in 1918. Essentially, Itapal was a vast city really of the British Army behind the lines. There were hospital facilities here to treat the wounded and the sick. There was a training ground for the British Army to bring its newly conscripted soldiers over from Britain across on the ferry from Folkestone to Boulogne for example and then be brought down by train to Etapla and go into the training ground called the Bull Ring by the men where men with yellow brassards, yellow armbands called canaries, would instruct them on the minutiae of the things that they needed to know as soldiers. They were not popular, the canaries. They beasted the men, they treated them badly. But it was necessary training to get these men ready for the front. 
And from here, they were then dispatched to the front line, wherever that was at the time. And in the last two years of the war, 1917-18, that's when Etapla was really used to its full extent as the main base depot of the British Army on the Western Front. And almost every soldier who passed through the British Army and served on the Western Front in that period of the war would have come through Etapla at some point during that period. So for the soldiers' experience of the Great War, this was a, a crucial location. Nothing exists of the Bull Ring today. Back in the day, in the early years when I used to visit the battlefield, you could find the remains of barbed wire pickets in the sand and some areas of the training ground were still visible, but that's all long gone. A few scratchy artefacts were found when there was a bit of an archeological dig here some years ago, but I would guess the rest of the archeology span of Etapla has yet to be found. Today, what marks this site is this city of the dead.